Right, so today we're looking at part two of 34-year-old Mike and his 24-year-old Colombian girlfriend, Jimena. Last time out, we were introduced to Mike, an IT support technician and volunteer firefighter who still lives at home with his father and grandfather. During the episode, he admitted that he hadn't had a girlfriend since high school until he met Jimena, a cam girl from Colombia with two kids that she had with two different men. The pair have been speaking online for the past year, and now Mike is off to Colombia to meet her in person for the first time. He's visiting her for two weeks and he's planning on proposing whilst he's out there so that he can bring her to the US on a 90 day visa as soon as possible. Today we're going to watch as he touches down in South America, meets her and her family for the first time and discovers a big devastating secret that she's been keeping from him. So to start off we're in Pereira airport where Mike has just landed safe and sound. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> My first impression seeing him and I was extremely happy. First kiss was amazing. Estoy muy feliz. When Mike arrived, there was actually an entire scene of him running around the airport being like, I don't even know if Jimena's actually gonna show up. It's been half an hour and she's not here and I can't get through to her. But I swear the producers do that every single time and this time it was so obviously fake. And given we know he wasn't catfished because we briefly met Jimena in the last episode, I thought I'd skip it so that we could get to finding out what Jimena makes of seeing Mike in person for the first time. Cuando vi a Mike por primera vez que fui a recoger al aeropuerto, pues me sorprendió. No pensé que fuera tan bajito, pero cuando lo vi yo dije, wow, es más bajito. Pero Mike es tiernito, con sus gafitas, y se ve tiernito. She doesn't actually really try to hide the fact that she's not particularly attracted to Mike, which begs the question, why is she interested in him? Obviously we know that he's been sending her money to pay her rent and buy herself things, but surely she's going to at least pretend to like him for more than that, right? I have a place that I want to show you to eat now. Who called you now? My father. Why do you hurt me? I this is so awkward, but I love how weirdly confident he is. It's like when you've asked someone to repeat themselves one too many times and it becomes awkward to ask again, so you just nod your head and laugh and just hope that they weren't asking a question. Also, this is just the first time we see it, but Te Amor seems to be his go-to response for the entire series, when either he doesn't understand something or feels really awkward and doesn't know what else to say. And it gets progressively worse each time it happens. Unsurprisingly, given they speak different languages, communication breakdowns happen a lot. And Although he's brought a little translator gadget with him, a lot of the time it just really doesn't help. Internet is muy malo. Olvídalo. It's actually painful to watch. I don't know how I feel about this though, because on the one hand, you'd think that after an entire year and all the time that he's known about this trip, you'd brush up on your Spanish to at least a conversational level. And surely you'd pick some up not even trying sending all those translated messages. So how does he know so little? But at the same time, I do want to give him some credit for at least trying to speak to her in Spanish. Because so often on this show, we see the American partner show absolutely no interest in learning about their partner's language or culture. I just wish he had done more and bring that rubbish little translator because next up he goes to meet her family and it lets him down again. But before we get to that, a quick message from today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is the first game to bring a true console level experience to your phone where you can build your team from over 600 champions to take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles and PvP arenas. One of my absolute favourite champions is a high elf called Royal Guard. With his extremely powerful ability that scales damage based on enemy max HP, he specialises in destroying bosses. Another one of my favourites is Glacea Soul Guide. Considered by many to be the Ice Queen of Teleria due to her default skills ability to freeze an enemy and her third skills ability to freeze an entire enemy team. There is always so much going on at Raid, but today I want to tell you about the brand new 
event for the summer solstice known as the Path of Light, where you'll be able to explore three branching paths to get the rewards you want the most. There is also currently a special Deliana chase event where you can get your hands on Deliana, a brand new legendary champion for free, just by logging in and playing raid for seven days between now and the 20th of July. And on top of all of that, there are some awesome new champions coming out and a set of skins for the amazing Trunda Guilt Mallet. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen for bonuses worth $30. That's a free epic champion called Virgis, 200k silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard. Plus, if you enter the promo code MYDELIANA, you'll get 50 XP boost to instantly get your legend to max level. All of these rewards will be waiting for you here. Huge thank you to Raid for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to Mike meeting Jimena's family. It's nice to meet everybody for the first time. Lo siento. <laughs> it's nice to meet everybody for the first time. Me gusta conocer a todo el mundo por primera vez. <laughs> <laughs> That was an almost 30 second clip and all he managed to say was nice to meet everybody. And he didn't even get it right. If things continue like this, this could honestly be one of the longest two weeks of his entire life. I wonder what Jimena's family are actually thinking too. She spent her entire life bringing back criminals and gang members and then all of a sudden she rocks up with this guy. Oh no, what? Oh no, what? Man, to get a disapproving look like that from the father after all the other boyfriends he's probably met is rough. I wonder if he suspects that the relationship isn't genuine so doesn't really have a reason to warm up to Mike. Like maybe he knows something that we don't know about what Jimena is up to. If not though, it's a little bit harsh on Mike. Him repeating Te Amo to them like that in front of everyone is definitely a little bit awkward. But given both of their fathers are absent, surely it's better for him to be overly affectionate than distant or formal with them. He also will have spoken to them on FaceTime over the past year so it's not as if it's come out of nowhere and he doesn't know them. And they actually seem to really like him too. Cuando yo lo conocí me cayó muy bien. Yo quiero que Mai sea mi padrastro porque es el mejor novio de mi mamá que he visto. Yeah, so it's nice that he's left a good first impression on someone at least. Well, after a very long and awkward day, it's finally time for everyone to go to bed. The kids usually sleep in Jimena's bed with her, but tonight Mike has sent them packing. After doing long distance for as long as they have, he's only got one thing on his mind right now. I've been waiting a year um, to be intimate with Jimena. Are we? I want Jimena to know that I want to fulfill all her fantasies, give her the best pleasure, the best night ever. Go on, Mike. Finally, a little bit of confidence. I mean, I'm pretty sure Jimena's ideal fantasy is you writing her a fat check and then getting on the next flight home. But after all the guys that we've seen on this show that haven't really cared about their partner's pleasure, it's nice to see someone want to give back for a change. I guess we've just got to find out whether he's actually able to or not. Our first night together um, in bed was the best time that I've ever had with a woman. Um, Jimena knocked it out of the park. Um, I had a great time over and over again. Eh, para mí normal. <laughs> Nada del otro mundo, entonces. Pero creo que Mai, como que fue el momento de su vida. Yeah, probably a good thing he didn't understand Spanish for this one. Although to be fair, he might not have given her the best night ever, but given it was probably his first time, or probably first few times, it definitely could have been a lot worse than just normal. I actually also think that this is a little bit weird from Jimena. I feel like after a year of long distance, you'd mainly just appreciate the fact that you got to experience intimacy with the person you love, and how great it was physically wouldn't matter so much. For me at least, this is probably more evidence that she just doesn't have that deep connection with him, but I guess if she was underwhelmed, what can you do? Anyway, after their first night together, Jimena surprised Mike with a trip to a thermal spa. They seemed to have a nice time, Mike got a chance to relax and play with the kids, and everything went pretty well. However, in the evening, Jimena had another surprise lined up for Mike, and this was one I don't think he ever saw coming. Veo que tú juegas con Harold, con Juan, entonces... 
siento que tú serías un buen papá, sería un gran papá. Pero yo no puedo tener hijos. O sea, yo me operé y no puedo tener más hijos. Nunca, jamás. Why do people do this so much? Mike said in the last video that they've discussed having kids together several times, and he was clearly so excited about the prospect of being a father one day. I get her temptation to want to tell him bad news in person, but knowing that she can't have kids and never mentioning it whenever Mike talks about his dream of them having kids together is so unfair. Amor, cuando yo tuve a Jaron, para mí fue de mucho temor, o sea, sufrí mucho. Y debido a eso, le cogí miedo tener hijos, entonces por eso quise operarme. Why haven't I found out about this sooner? Yo tenía muchos nervios de que tú me fueras a dejar porque no puedo tener hijos. Her reasoning for getting the surgery is kind of irrelevant. The problem is only mentioning it a year into the relationship when he's already flown out to Colombia. It just puts him in such a difficult position. If that's a game changer for him, what's he supposed to do? Fly back a day after arriving? This is really big news, um, and it's something that I have to really think about. I just wish you would have told me. I just don't want any secrets between us. We've talked about this on the phone, about someday wanting to have at least one more kid. So I really don't know where we're going to go from here. Mike took this whole thing pretty well, to be fair to him. Like, given he was lied to in quite a significant way, his response was very calm. I really rate that he tried to understand why she had the operation and why she didn't tell him, and that he just said he needed some time to think about things rather than making a decision or saying something rash in the heat of the moment. Well, a few days pass and things go on pretty normally, and eventually they finally get some alone time again. So Jimena takes Mike for a walk around her father's coffee plantation to talk things through now that Mike's had some time to think about it all. Sorry, but I'm still upset about uh, what happened at the uh, hot springs and that you kept that secret from me. No pensé que iba a volver a tener una pareja porque es... mantengo muy desilusionada de los hombres, es eso. No pensé que te iba a conocer, no es mi culpa. It's not her fault for getting them tied. That's actually quite a responsible thing to do as a single mum when you've had two kids with two separate guys. But it is her fault for leading them on. I feel like there are also quite a few manipulation tactics potentially being used here. Like her waiting until he's flown out to Colombia before telling him so it's harder for him to leave. Her focusing on the sad reason she had the operation to avoid talking about the fact that she didn't tell him. Her sleeping with him on the first night which could have been a tactic to make him more likely to want to stay after telling him. And even her apology focuses on having the operation as opposed to being dishonest with him. Forgive me for not being able to give you a child. It's, it's okay. We can raise Harold and Juan together. Giving up the ability of having my own kids someday, it's just, um, just really, really, really hard to process. I feel bad for the guy. I mean, he's not entirely innocent himself. He's arguably using her in return and taking advantage of the fact that he comes with money and the promise of a better life in the US. But seeing his dreams crushed before his eyes is quite sad to watch. So from now on, no more secrets ever? Está bien, te lo prometo, te lo juro. No más secretos. Okay. I love you very much. Yo también te quiero mucho. He's very forgiving, isn't he? He would have had every right to have done a rose and been like, this is a deal breaker for me. And the fact that you waited a year and until after we slept together is even worse. But it's weird. It's like he's pretty much gotten over it already and she's gotten off way too easily in my opinion. You've also got to wonder if she'd react in a similar way if he turned around and was like, I can no longer afford to pay your rent or bring you to the US. My gut feeling is telling me that we're meant to be together. I still love her. She has two beautiful children now, so I can help raise them as if they're my own. But she's gonna have to uh, win back my trust.
It's all a bit tragic, isn't it? You can kind of tell that Jimena isn't that into him. And in most of the boring bits that I cut out, they just have very little chemistry. And Jimena often even seems slightly repulsed by him. And on the other side, Mike doesn't seem to really care that she might be using him or that she was dishonest about the operation, as long as he's getting intimacy and physical affection in return. It just seems like such a transactional relationship that you can't help but feel won't last very long. And unfortunately, in terms of things that they've been hiding from each other, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So so if you want to find out what dark secrets they uncover about each other in the next episode, please feel free to subscribe down below so you can catch the next episode as soon as I upload it. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.